Hey everyone, I wanted to do a quick recitation on getting your React app deployed to Netlify. Uh, this is going to be a short one as I'm not feeling super well, um, but we should cover everything you need in order to get your React applications up and running on the internet for people to use. So I have an old uh, project of mine, um, and this is the, the Apple Nav uh, assignment. And as we can see, um, we have basically nothing in the root of this repository. But inside of this Apple Nav folder, this is where our React app lives. This is where we see the package.json, the source with all our code in it, public. This is where the React application lives. So with this in mind, we're going to deploy to Netlify. So... Um, we go to Netlify, we log in, and then they have this big nice button here that says new site from Git. I want to get a repository from GitHub. If you're trying to deploy a site from a GitHub organization, you most likely need to be an owner of that organization to have the rights to. Otherwise, an owner will need to approve your request to link it. But if you click on this little drop down here, it'll show you all your GitHub organizations. So you can click on that and then you can search for the repository that you want. I want the Apple Nav project. So what I'm going to do right now uh, is try to set this up. So it, first it tells us the branch we want to deploy. You most likely want to deploy master. For the sake of this, uh, this project, I'm going to deploy my named branch because I'm going to make some changes to it. Um, now we have to specify the build command. If we look inside of our project, inside of the package.json, we'll notice that in this JSON file there's a section called scripts. There's start, and that's the one we've been using in order to develop our project. But there's another one called build. And that will actually build our React application and bundle it all up into, you know, a single page set of JavaScript files and CSS that we can deploy to the Internet. So for a build command, if we're using Yarn, if inside of this we see a Yarn.lock, if our team has been using Yarn, then the build command is going to be Yarn build. If we see a package-lock.json, if our team has been using npm, then we're going to use npm run build. You might ask how I know this. Have you ever read the readme that shows up when uh, you do create React app? It says you're right here. npm run build builds the app for production to the build folder. It correctly bundles, react in production mode, and blah, 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 blah. So our build command is either npm run build or yarn build, which is what I want to use. And then our publish directory is going to be build. When we run our build commands, it's going to package up the React app into that build um, folder. So we're going to hit yeah. deploy site. Question, uh, Henry. Yes. Um, so, do we have to have the build script in our package.json? Yes. And that's with npm as well as yarn. Yes. That that the the scripts are user defined in terms of what we want them to do. We can name our build script whatever we want. We don't even have to use yarn or npm. We could kick off our own program to run the build. But when we use create React app. Um, it will create in package.json the script section for us that uses the React scripts package to build our React application, and that's good enough for us. Um, and this will handle a lot of the complicated things that are actually going on in terms of bundling and, and building the React app. So, um, I have my build command, I have my publish directory, I'm going to hit deploy site, and something is going to go wrong. And we're going to see what. So I get this and it says site deploy in project, in progress. I'm going to go to my deploys tab 
and I can see that this is building. And if I click on here, it will actually show me the terminal output of trying to build this. And I get this error, failing build, failed to build site, uh, build script return non-zero exit code, uh-oh. So, um, don't quite know what happened there. There's a lot of stuff in here. Basically, what it's trying to tell me is that it couldn't run the build script. And the reason is, is because when it tries to run that script, it's going to do it at the root of my repository. It's going to try to do it right here. If your React application was at the root of this repository, then that's going to work just fine. But ours is in this, Napple, uh, in this Apple Nav folder. And I'm guessing most of your projects, the React app is going to be in a, in a folder as well. So we want to remember the name of this, Apple Nav. And then I'm going to go back to Deploys, and I'm going to go to Deploy Settings. And notice my base directory is not set. This basically says, where do you want me to go before I try to run the build command? We want it to go where our React app is. So that's going to be Apple Nav. And you can see it automatically modifies our published directory to be the build directory inside of there. So now if I click Save, I've changed my build settings. But my website is still broken. I don't have anything on here. That's because it hasn't been built again. The way we can do this is when we set up Netlify, it has automatic deploys set up by default. So if we push any changes to uh, the branch, Netlify will automatically rebuild the site. But in this case, I don't want to push any changes. I just want to rebuild it using the new settings that I have. So I can, within deploys, I can click Trigger Deploy and then Deploy Site. And that will cause Netlify to try to rebuild our site and deploy that. So we can see it doing all its setup. And it's going to take a minute. But when this is done, we should have our React app ready to go. So any questions while we're waiting for this to finish? Yeah, does uh, does Netlify use NPM or Yarn to build a project? Netlify uses whatever you place in the build command. You can use Yarn, you can use NPM, you can use a custom bash script that you have in your, in your repository. You can use literally anything that you want. Um, and you can see, it if you read this, it's actually downloading Yarn for us to use. Um, so you can use pretty much anything you want in order to build the project. And it's running. You can see it executed the user command yarn build. That's our build command. And then that in turn runs react scripts build, which was the value of that build script in our JSON file. And then now it's building our website and it's done. And if I click on preview, it will show me my project. And that's it. That's all it takes. Set the baster, set your build command, set the published directory. And that's all you need. But I want to show you one weird thing. So when we use React Router, we change the URL of our website. Watch what happens when I refresh the page. It says page not found. Because when I refresh the page, Netlify is trying to go into the iPad directory, go into the iPad Pro directory, trying to find a file called index.html here. That doesn't exist, so we're getting this page not found error. That's because technically our React app is a single HTML page. It's an HTML at this root, and when we do routing, we visually change the URL, but we're not actually navigating to a new HTML page. What Netlify allows us to do is it allows us to upload a file that will tell it how to redirect people who try to visit those other URLs. So this is what we do. If you Google Netlify redirects, you will find a nice page explaining everything you can do with redirects, and it's actually quite cool. 
and, and quite expressive the amount of stuff that you can do. But here's what you got to do to get this working. In the public directory, we are going to create a file called the underscore redirects. We put it in the public directory because this is the directory full of stuff that is ultimately going to end up in our build. Everything in source gets packaged up, but this build directory is where things like the favicon of the website go, the actual index.html page, and some other stuff. So we create a file called underscore redirects. And then in here, uh, this is what we want it to say. It's actually reading this. I, I did this while I was testing. Um, so we want slash star space slash index.html 200. What this means is this is what we're redirecting from, this is what we're redirecting to, and this is the status code of the redirect. So we can put anything we want here, like they give the example of if I want to redirect from blog old title to blog new title, I'm allowed to do that. This star represents literally all possibilities. So if a user tries to load any page on our React site, it is going to redirect them to index.html. But the way our status code works is it isn't going to forcibly redirect them to the URL index.html. It's going to render index.html but keep the path that the user was at and that's the exact behavior that we want we still want them to be at the URL they were at but we actually want their web browser to go out and fetch index.html and then load up the app with the correct routing there so I'm gonna save this file I'm going to commit it real fast now it's good form to begin your commit message with a capital letter but punctuation is not necessary so then I'm going to push that to the Henry Blevins branch. And uh, Netlify should automatically redeploy for me. And it might take a... Oh, yep, there it goes. See, this is the commit hash that it is literally redeploying. And we can see that it is rebuilding our website. And that's going to take a minute. In the meantime, I'm going to show you how to change the name of your website. It's very easy. Go into, I believe it's uh, domain settings. Or is this going to want you to, yeah, that's custom domains. Okay. So uh, we go into site settings and then change site name. And then I can change this to whatever I want as long as a different Netlify user hadn't done it. So then now my website will be deployed at recitationapplenav.netlify.com. And let's check on the status of our build, and it's done. So if I go to my page, it has this nicer name. And if I navigate to this path using React Router, and then I refresh the page, it's going to work. As opposed to on the old version, where when I refresh the page, I got this not found error. So that's how you deploy to Netlify. That's how you make refreshing work with React Router. That's how you rename your website. Do we have any questions? Yeah, so every time you have a React app with React Router uh, and you upload to Netlify, you're going to have to do that script? Yes. Yes, if you want it so that when the user refreshes the page that they will be redirected to that then yes you will have to do that on Netlify um, so and that, that is because uh, when you are refreshing the page is it's going to that URL it sees in the browser yeah because it's literally like me trying to go to this website for the first time and the way our browser works is it will try to find the, the page at this location you know it will try to find this in next.html and that doesn't exist our react app is the single page it's a single page application so we're telling netlify to whenever they try to do this actually redirect them to the real index.html that our react app lives at um, <clears throat> and 
when you use, you know, other software, um, there will be other ways of managing these kinds of redirections. Um, but that's how we do it on Netlify. And that file, that where does that file go again? The one that you created? So the file I created, it's called underscore redirects, and it goes in the public directory of our React app. And Netlify knows to look for that redirect folder. It it knows that this redirects file underscore redirects is uh, a Netlify ism. Netlify has provided us this interface where it will check this file, read the rules inside of it, and change how the server works based on that. Um, we put it in the public directory because uh, when I set the publish directory on Netlify to build, that's the directory that Netlify is going to look for the file in. And we don't put this directly in build, we put it in the public directory because the way that React handles building the website for us is everything that's in public will end up in that build directory. So we can put anything that we want to end up on that site um, inside of public and it will also end up in that build directory, including our underscore redirects file. You can include this on any uh, Netlify website, it doesn't have to be React. Uh, you know, on their, on their reference page, they give examples of like redirecting uh, you know, uh, an old blog post to a different title. Um, and you can just put that in whatever the published directory of what you're deploying to Netlify is, which for a static website is just the root of your Git repository. But for a React website, there's some steps we have to follow through to build it and then get Netlify the directory it needs. So, uh, any other questions? All right. Well, then, um, that is my recitation for the day. Um, I will get this video uh, posted up. Uh, for you guys. Thank you all so much for coming. I'm sorry for cutting it so short, but uh, I am a bit under the weather. So uh, I'll see you all later. Thanks a lot, Henry. Appreciate it. You're welcome.